series is called Kingdom Transformation. And so we're going to continue with that tonight. And, and Brother Fred is going to uh, minister what God has put in our hearts in ever increasing glory, ever increasing glory. And so I'm going to turn it over to him. Uh, well, God's original intention was for us to be clothed with his glory. And that's what we see in uh, the Garden of Eden with uh, Adam and Eve. They were clothed in the glory. They just walked and talked with the Lord. And uh, but, but when they sinned, uh, they missed the mark and uh, they lost the glory. But praise God for Jesus Christ, because when he came Amen. and uh, went to the cross and was uh, he died, was buried, and was resurrected, he restored uh, all things unto us. And so we mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. can be clothed with the glory of God. That was always God's intention. And what is the glory of God? Well, it's his presence. It's his manifested presence. Now, we know that God is always with us. He's always with you. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. But I'm talking about a higher level of manifestation of his presence than just simply mm -hmm. being with you. It's, a, it's the realm where signs and wonders occur, where miracles occur, where things are changed, where our lives are changed uh, from the inside out. And uh, mm -hmm. it, it's a glorious time. And so what we're going to talk about tonight is uh, how do we discover uh, walking in his presence, manifested presence. Uh, when we can go higher and higher in the Lord, there is no limits. Amen. We can Amen. go higher and higher and Amen. have Amen. Uh, more and more of his glory. Uh, I, I want to th start with a, a verse in Colossians, and I I love it in the uh, NIV, and of course it says basically the same thing in all the other translations, but it has a specific phrase here in uh, Colossians 3, verses 1 and 2. Should you read this? Where is Colossians? Oh, no, no. no I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians, I'm sorry. 2 Corinthians 3, 18. <laughs> I got ahead of myself. And we all who <clears throat> with unveiled faces contemplate or think about the <clears throat> Lord's glory are being transformed into his image with ever increasing glory. Oh, hallelujah. That which comes from the Lord, hallelujah. who is the Spirit. Now that means we haven't arrived yet. Hallelujah. We're still in that. Ever increasing. In ever increasing glory. That's exactly where we are. Second Corinthians 3 verses 18. Ever increasing glory. So we're looking at him. The veil's been taken off. The veil hallelujah. has been rent. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Uh, in the old... Uh, Testament and in the tabernacle, there was a, a veil that uh, separated mm -hmm. a man from the glory of God. And only once a year could one person go into mm -hmm. that, the high priest, and see it. But, but when Jesus died on the cross, the veil was rent from top to bottom. Hallelujah. So the veil is off of our eyes and off of, a, mm -hmm. off of us, and it doesn't separate us from the glory of God. We're no longer separated mm -hmm. from the glory of God, but we can walk into his glory and we can go to a higher and higher level, ever increasing. And we need to be aware of that. Now, there's a lot of people that uh, they know their uh, destination is, is assured that uh, because they've accepted Jesus Christ in, as Lord, as Savior, then they're going to go to heaven. Mm -hmm. But there's so much more intended for us here. Amen. He wants us to walk in more and more glory. That's his manifested presence. Uh, last uh, weekend, Sherry and I were in Mexico, ministering in Mexico, and, and I saw the manifested yeah. uh, presence of God, Amen. the glory of Amen. God just moving through that it, building. It, it came through, yeah. And people were healed and delivered and set free. And, and uh, after this weekend, we've been... Uh, receiving reports back from that uh, place that right. those people will never be the same. Well, I won't either. Amen. I, I, won't, won't so. I don't want to go back. Yeah. I, I don't want to be the same as I was. So God's original intention was for us to walk in the glory, to be clothed in the glory. But 
uh, Romans uh, three talks about uh, we've all missed it. Uh, we mm -hmm. didn't we didn't get uh, where we needed to be. And uh, praise God for Jesus; He's restored things. So read Romans read three twenty three <clears throat> and twenty four. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Twenty four being justified as a gift by His grace through the redemption which is in Christ Jesus. Okay, so we've all missed it. And so don't think we're to the point where uh, we have it all. We're still in progress. No, we're hallelujah. still a work in progress. Mm -hmm. We're still in process. And uh, then let's go to this next verse in uh, 2 Corinthians 4. Verses 17 and 18. And this is out of the Passion Translation. We view our, our slight short-lived troubles <laughs> i believe it's the light of afflic afflictions yeah, yeah. in in the light of eternity we see our difficulties as the substance that produces for us an eternal weighty glory okay let's just pause here mm, for a minute okay. before you read this so he's talking about in life in life we're going to experience troubles and difficulties but if we approach those in the proper way it's going to help develop us so that we can carry Ooh, more, more of, of his glory. glory oh that's good so read that up. that's good that's really the good verses again from the beginning okay <clears throat> we view our slight short-lived troubles in the light of eternity we see our difficulties as the substance that produces for us an eternal weighty glory far above all comparison because we don't focus our attention on what is seen, but what is on unseen. Okay. Hallelujah. So, so there's Hallelujah. something we need to do here. We need to keep our attention on things that are not seen. Now, what's not seen? Well, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's right. Amen. The angels, the glory of God, all Hallelujah. of that is not seen. Yep. And that's what we need to be thinking about the things that are not seen. As long as we're thinking about the things that are seen, we don't get this. We don't get what we're talking about tonight. Hallelujah. <clears throat> we need to keep our affections on things above. Hallelujah. Mm -mm. Now, I, I want to make a point here that there's a difference between impartation and maturity. And this is an important part point for this particular message. See, we can impart things. And, and we impart uh, things to you all the time. Moses imparted wisdom to Joshua. Uh, when we're teaching, it's not just giving knowledge, but there is an impartation happening. Mm, that's right. <clears throat> that's what we're believing for, and I know that's that right. many of you are believing for. Not just knowledge. This is this. These sessions are not just about knowledge. This, this is about an impartation, and, and you know, uh, there is also the thing, let's say what Romans 11, 1, 11, in Romans 1, 11, Paul said that he wanted to see some people who mm -hmm. he had never laid eyes on. And what he really wanted to do was impart some gifts to them. Okay, mm -hmm. read this verse. Romans 1, 11. <clears throat> For I long to see you, that I may impart to you some spiritual gift, so that you may be established. Hallelujah. Okay, these were people he had never laid eyes on. So then you can't say, well, he had a relationship with them for 20 years. And, and so they got this impartation. No, it was people he'd never laid eyes on, but he was going to give them a gift so they would be established. So mm, okay. you can impart gifts. And uh, we, Sherry and I impart gifts. And, and uh, that's a real important thing. Uh, and, and one of the reasons we do that is that we have freely received and so we freely, freely give. give. Uh, when we were uh, first uh, in the <clears throat> excuse me, when we were first in the ministry, uh, we went to a lot of different conferences, and I had a lot of uh, ministers that I respected. I still have a great respect uh, for them, and such people as Kenneth Hagen and Norval Hayes, uh, and those may be Kenneth names. Copeland that you are not familiar with, but uh, we followed them and, and we listened to their teaching and, 
uh, we went to their conferences and, and they freely uh, laid their hands on us to impart things into us. And we received that. Mm -hmm. And so we're not a uh, stagnant pool, but we pass it along. What Hallelujah. we receive from God, we pass it along. And so there are things that you can impart. And it's important. It's an important part of uh, being in the body of Christ, being in a prophetic company, being in an apostolic mm -hmm. company of people, that there are impartations. Mm -hmm. and, and those impartations really have changed my life. I, I'm not the person I was Amen. Uh, because of the things that have been imparted into my life. You look at Elijah and Elisha. I mean, uh, Elijah, Elijah, Elijah uh, imparted some things into Elisha's life. He said, I want a double portion. I want a double portion of the anointing. Mm -hmm. And uh, it wasn't because he earned it, really. I, I mean, he was there. They were, he was... Uh, uh, a student, a disciple of Elijah, and uh, Elijah was his mentor, but still it was a gift. It's a gift. Mm -hmm. And uh, he received that. And like I said, Moses had imparted wisdom to uh, Amen. Joshua as his, his disciple. Um, so there are impartations and impartations are an important thing. But what I'm talking about tonight is different than impartation. It's something this glory that I'm talking about, uh, being changed from glory to glory, uh, relates to a maturity process, spiritual mm, mm, growth. Mm. And so you can't impart uh, this that we're talking about tonight. This is something that comes through spiritual growth and through maturity. And we have to make some life choices. And that's what this message is about tonight. How do we make those choices so that we can walk in an ever increasing uh, level of God's glory, of his manifested uh, presence? And we see a, an example here in Hebrews chapter 5. I want you to read a couple of verses here. Yeah. Before I read these <clears throat> verses, I know there's some, something coming up inside of me right now, and that is uh, not only is it maturity, uh, in in the in the things of the spirit, but it's a sensitivity of of knowing uh, and and being able to 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 move and flow in the Holy Spirit, and I believe that's very important as well if we want to carry more of His glory. I'm going to read Hebrews five thirteen and fourteen for everyone who partakes only of milk is unacquainted with the word of righteousness for he is an infant but solid food or the meat is for the mature who because of practice have their senses right. hallelujah trained to distinguish between good and evil okay so there's two different groups of people in the body of christ they're they're the infants and that's not infants uh, immature people uh, by age, but it's by how much of the word that they have digested, mm -hmm. not just what they've heard, not just what they've listened to, but it's actually become a part of them. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. And so the the milk of the word does not mature people. It, it uh, sustains them. Oh, that's it's right. just a, a mm -hmm. just sustains mm -hmm. them so they can continue on. They don't die. They don't uh, wither on the vine. Mm -hmm. I, I've been in uh, uh, congregations where the people were just sustained with uh, the milk of the word and they were not changed. They were not being transformed because they were just hearing the milk mm -hmm. of the mm -hmm. word. And that's often the case uh, with people just getting general messages. But when you dig into the word of God yourself and you you pursue that and you're looking for the strong uh, meat and the solid food, then that's what's going to change you. And that's what's going to help mm -hmm. you mature mm -hmm. so that you can be on this line of ever increasing glory. glory. Hallelujah. 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 We've also been in <clears throat> congregations where they have starved the people. Uh, there was one congregation that we went into and, and tell them the word that the, the Lord the gave you. The Holy Spirit said that these people are emaciated. Now, 
That's a word I had to look up. I didn't even know what it meant, but he said it makes it basically they were starving. They were starving. And and yet uh, on the surface and the natural, it looked it looked like there was a lot going mm -hmm. on there. Mm -hmm. But the Holy Spirit said these people are emaciated. And so we've got to be where uh, we receive the richness of God's word. There was another congregation we were in, the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit. Uh, said that the man was just feeding pablum. Pastor was just right, right. Feed, giving them pablum. And I don't know much about pablum, but it's not even the milk of the word. Uh, it's mm -hmm. even a, le mm -hmm. a lower level. And they might, they might uh, continue on. They might not die. They might not wither on the vine, but they are not growing in those kinds of situations. And so many congregations around the world uh, are at that level where they're not bringing forth a strong meat and solid food. They're, they're just sustaining the people at best, at best. And, uh, you know, I, I heard something today that's r really caught my attention. That it's, it's the enemy um, wants to have a hostile takeover, a hostile takeover of many churches. He, that, I, I was before that, I was thinking, well, um, you, you know, you've got the churches and the church and, and it's here and it's isolated and there's a lot of evil going on in the world. But but the devil, that's not the plan of the devil. No. Just to yeah. do evil in the world. He wants a hostile takeover of the, the church. church. And it's happening one after another. They're like dominoes. A lot of them are falling. So we have to have to desire the sincere sincere milk of the word that we may grow and desire the meat of the word so we may mature. That's what's going to change us. That's what's going to transform us from glory uh, to, to, to glory. glory. Amen. So there's a difference Amen. between just simply uh, receiving a little bit of the word, but to be transformed, we've got to want more and more of the Lord Jesus Christ because he is the word, the living word word and that's Hallelujah. what's going to Hallelujah. transform us and that's going to give us uh, that ability to be changed from glory to glory and the passage that Sherry read in uh, 2 Corinthians 4 is that when we experience life difficulties and troubles if we're receiving that uh, mature uh, maturing word of God the solid word of God that that we're skillful in the word of righteousness, then we're going to be maturing. Now, another word that uh, Sherry had just read, we need to be practicing something. So that's yeah, a real yeah. important word I want you to get out of this message tonight. We need to be practicing something. And we're going to be talking about that. What is it that we need to be practicing if we're going to be experiencing ever increasing glory we want to go from glory to glory from one level of glory to a higher level of glory then to a higher level of glory glory ever in clear increasing glory uh, this is uh something that we all need uh, if we if you're interested in operating in the gifts of the spirit if you want to to you want signs and wonders to happen in in your life and if you want your prayers answered effectively uh, time after time you need more of the glory of god the manifested presence of god so that you begin to mm. see things from his perspective yes and not just from needs see so many people are like a, they're in a hole they've dug themselves into a hole and they're just uh, uh pleading for help and they're not operating in the uh, as mature sons and daughters of the Lord. And so I want Sherry to, to read this next thing that we're going to be talking about is that maturity is going to come from choices that we make, the choices uh, of life that we make. And, and I've got this uh, two points that I want to make. It's a very simple um, message that there are two points that are going to help us. And the first point, and, and I, I call this, set your affections on things above. Now, again, we're talking Amen. about Amen. practicing Amen. something. 
Set your affections on things above. Now, a lot of people say, oh, I love the Lord. That's right. They love the Lord. They're going to go to heaven. Their, their destination is assured. But what are they practicing in this life? And that's what we want to talk about. What can we practice to help us operate in more and more glory, the more and more of the manifested presence of God. And we've got to be practicing some things. Now, this is not a formula. I, I, these are just suggestions, things about that I want you to ponder and, and think about that uh, this will help you uh, as you mature, help you to mature and, and press into the Lord and walk in more and more of his glory. And the first thing I want to say is set your affections on things above. Now, this Amen. is Colossians 3, verses 1 and 2. You That's want me to read this one? Um, okay, read that one first. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, this I'm, is an important point, then, and that is about James. And, mm -hmm. and James, uh, this is the overall issue of what we're dealing with here. It's about maturity. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have to save our soul now when when we come uh to the lord jesus christ we accept him as our savior our spirit is born again okay no doubt about it our spirit is born again and that's who you become you become the spirit person within you but that doesn't mean your soul is saved your spirit is saved but you also have you have three parts to your to your person, you have the spirit, you have the soul, and the soul is the, is the mind, mm -hmm. will, and emotions. All of those things mm -hmm. have to be changed, have to be transformed. So your spirit, see, becomes alive in Christ Jesus when you are born again. That's your salvation. And the, but there's another type of salvation, and that that is the salvation of the soul. That's the saving of your mind mm -hmm. and yeah. saving of your will and saving of your emotions and the saving of your body. Oh, hallelujah. They all go together because first Thessalonians five, uh, 23 talks about the whole spirit, soul, and body, body. That, that, that the very God of mm -hmm. peace will sanctify mm -hmm. your whole spirit, soul, soul and, and body. body. So yeah. we want all of those. So when we, we come to this point where we're born again, then we can carry some level of glory, but not much. At that point, the amount that we can carry is rather limited. Now, Sherry and I both had a dream one night 30 years ago that we it's saw the, pe dream. the people of God, um, that they were fine crystals, but they had all kinds of cracks and fractures and, and uh, chips mm -hmm. out of them. And the Holy Spirit... <clears throat> said that it takes the fire of God to change fine crystal, the, the fine crystal that I was seeing with all of those uh, uh, breaks and uh, mm. chips out and fractures and all of those, uh, to turn it into fine linen, fine crystal. Uh, fine crystal that's able to carry the glory of God. So it, uh, Jesus wants to reveal himself, the fullness of himself. That's the idea and that's the glory. He wants to reveal who he is fully to you. But when you're first born again, your crystal, uh, it might be a vase or it might be a, a goblet or whatever it is. Uh, it has so many fractures in it and so many chips. And, and that's it comes from all of the uh, past experiences that we've had, the past the worldly knowledge and education and all of that, uh, that we're just not, prepared at that moment when we're born again to carry the full weight of his glory. And so it takes the fire of God to repair and to make those crystal vessels uh, perfect. And then they're going to be able to carry more and more glory. glory. So it's a weighty glory, his presence. He wants to reveal all of his glory to you, but he doesn't do it overnight. It's a process. That's the reason we're walking in more and more uh, of his glory as we mature more and more, as we experience spiritual growth. And so we have to have our soul saved. 
It's one thing to have our spirit saved, but uh, James mm -hmm. here talks about our soul being saved. Okay, sure. In James one twenty one, therefore ridding yourself of all filthiness and all that remains of wickedness. Okay, so he's writing to Christians here. James is writing to Christians. He said, get rid of all that junk, okay? In humility, receive the word implanted, which is able to save your soul. Okay, so it's God's word, his word of righteousness. When where is it? It's just in your head? No, it's implanted Planted in you. Implanted in you. That is what's going to save your soul. And, and, and humility. And think about that uh, fine crystal, that you are a fine crystal vase. And some of you may look one way and some of you may look another way, but your fine crystal vases or, or plates goblets or, or plates or whatever um, in the in God's mighty house and great house, there are many different vessels, vessels. some to honor and some to dishonor. Mm -hmm. So their honor, it, it's for honor and to carry his glory, uh, you, you know, as all those fractures uh, get uh, repaired and mended. And it's not a process that we can do in the natural. It's by the spirit of God. Amen. Hallelujah. So that's, that's the, the overall uh, core of what we're talking about tonight. And we're going to give you two uh, practical ways uh, that we can do this, that we can save our soul. That's our mind, will, and emotions. A and uh, we need it to be re all of it renewed. We need our mind renewed, our emotions renewed, our, all of that renewed. And it's, of course, as we lay our whole bodies on his altar uh, and uh, he renews us. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Because you know from uh, Romans 6 that uh, the old man is dead. I uh, was Amen. crucified with Christ and the sins are buried and all the old is buried when we went through baptism and we were raised with Christ. So uh, Christ was crucified as us and he was raised as us. And, and so uh, we need to get on that new mindset. Hallelujah. Put off the old man, put on the new man. And that's what we need to be focusing on here. And it's not going to happen overnight. It's a process. Mm -hmm. It's a progression uh, in our lives as we grow spiritually, as we mature. Now we're to Colossians 3. Well, I keep mm -hmm. wanting you yeah. to okay. We're here. We're here. Okay. Colossians 3, 1 and 2. If you have been raised with Christ, keep seeking the things which are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Verse two, set your mind on the things that are above, not on the things that are all of, of the earth. Okay. Oh, hallelujah. So here it is. We're going to have to, first of all, and I love the phrase, set your affections on things above. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Be fascinated with the God. Oh, uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ. Be fascinated. Yes, yes. Love the process. Yes, that we're think in. about it. Think and about it. That, that we are being changed from glory to glory, from one level of glory to a higher level of glory. And that's as we mature, as we keep focused on the things which are eternal. And, and so oh, I have hallelujah. two points to hallelujah. that. And the first point is set your affections on things above. And I have a couple of verses that will help us understand that. Uh, Sherry, read the, ne the next verse that you have there. Psalms 34, 3 and 4. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Okay. We're going to sing it again. Sing it with us if you know it. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, if we're going to set our affections on things above, we need to magnify the Lord. Ooh, Whatever hallelujah. our problems Thank are, Jesus. magnify the Lord. You magnify your you. problems. Hallelujah. You say, oh, I've got this big, oh, big problem. Oh, big problem. 
I don't have any money or the oh, doctors give me a bad report. Lord. But do you have something mm, bigger that mm, you can put mm. your attention on? Well, mm, magnify, magnify the, the Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this is going to keep you sensitive to spiritual things. So magnify the, the Lord, Lord bigger than your problems. Whatever your problems mm. are, keep magnifying Hallelujah. the Lord. Hallelujah. You praise Hallelujah. Praise Him and worship Him. The, the Lord is looking for true worshipers. Oh, He is. Mag he is. He is. going to magnify Hallelujah. the Lord Hallelujah. more than their uh, situation and circumstances. Mm. Praise so, you, Lord. How do we set our affections on things above? I love what first. Thessalonians 5 mm -hmm. says, verses 16 through 19. A and what I want you to see in this is there's practicing. We have to practice mm -hmm. these things mm -hmm. over and over again. But we have to have habits of these things. Practicing, that's rejoicing and praying without ceasing and giving thanks always. And so I'm going to let Sherry read these four mm -hmm. verses to you. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 19. Rejoice always. Didn't say just when you feel good. Or when you don't have any problems. Or when you don't have any problems. <laughs> this is rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Well, you know, I've had people say to me, well, I just don't know what the will of God is. <laughs> well, read First Thessalonians chapter 5. And it says, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. And that is to give him thanks. Concerning you. Hallelujah. Give him thanks. In everything. We can give him thanks. We don't give the devil thanks. Yeah. But we give him thanks. And we don't give him thanks for everything. That Hallelujah. The devil does. Amen. It just says in everything. Yes. And so if you said, well, uh, if you were like Job and you lost everything. How could you give him thanks? Well, you can give him thanks for your life because the, Amen. Devil, the devil didn't take Amen. your life. That's Amen. something worth you still breathe another day. Hallelujah. That's something worth giving God thanks for. Amen. Now, these Amen. are just practical ways to oh, do. one more. Yeah, I know. These are practical ways to do what we're talking about here. Make life choices so that you can grow and mature and grow in the glory of God. Okay, so let's do 19 and talk about the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. 19 is do not quench the Spirit. Okay. Allow the Spirit to move in you. Allow the Spirit to speak through you. Allow the Spirit to teach you and comfort you and bring you hope. And bring you peace. Okay. Because he is our comforter. But it says, quench not the spirit. Hallelujah. So Hallelujah. these are just some practical ways of setting our affections on things above. Some things that we can practice in our life day by day. Amen. Rejoice always. Pray without God ceasing. ceasing. And everything, everything give, give thanks. thanks. For this, this is, is the, the will, will of God, God concerning you. you. And in do Christ Jesus. not quench the spirit. spirit. Okay, just practical things. Now I have two points. First point was set your affections on things above. I've given you some ideas. Again, it's not a formula. It's just some things to ponder. If I'm going to do something on a daily basis, I've got to set some habits. I've got to establish some habits. I've, I've got to do some things. I've got to practice some things on a regular basis. Now here is my final point, and that is we have to have a skill of being humble, how to be humble. So it's a skill mm, of humility, mm -hmm. of operating in humility. Hallelujah. It's a skill that we need. But if we don't have humility, God can't work with us. There's a lot of people who are not humble. Uh, and the, how is God going to work with them and change them from glory to glory, if they don't let him work in their lives. See, we have to humble ourselves and realize what is going on in our lives. It's by the Spirit of God, by the grace of God. We can't make these changes I'm talking about tonight in our natural abilities. That's right. So I have a couple of verses. I, 
uh, passage as I want uh, Sherry to read mm -hmm. about humility. And this is about the character of the new man. I, I talked about from Romans 6 that we were resurrected with Christ as mm -hmm. a new man. We put off the old man and the new man. And so what does the new man look like? And here's here's the characteristics of it. But I want you to see that one of the characteristics is humility. Read this passage here, mm -hmm. please. This is Colossians 3, 12 through 14. Therefore, as the elect of God, that's you and I, holy and beloved, put on tender mercy, kindness, humility, humility, meekness, which means teachability, long suffering bearing with one another and forgiving one another if anyone has a complaint against another even as christ forgave you so you also must do but above all these things put on love hallelujah which is the bond of perfection okay. hallelujah hallelujah so we have, so we have saw love humility. forgiveness kindness tender-hearted and, uh, and humility, and humility. Okay, so here's another, that, that's just the characteristics of the new man. Now, here's another passage about humility. And, and again, the reason we do this, and this is my second point, second and final point, that uh, not only do we are we sensitive to things above, but we humble ourselves. We develop a skill in humbling ourselves. And mm, once you think, mm. oh, I've arrived, I'm humble. No, you're not. You have no, to start over. No, no, go back, no. go back to the beginning. Start over because it's a skill. It's a life skill that we need every day of humbling ourselves. And then God can, well, through His grace and through the work of the Holy Spirit, change us into from glory to glory. Okay, read this verse. First Peter five five through <clears throat> seven, and I love this passage. And humility actually is a cloak that you put upon yourself. Clothe yourself with humility toward one another because God is opposed to the, to the proud. But he gives grace to the humble. He will give you something. A grace is his operational power. He'll give you power to function every single day if you will humble yourself. And then verse six, therefore, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Now, here's how we do it right here. Verse seven, you got any cares or worries? Number seven is how you humble yourself. It's how you put on the garment of humility. Cast every care over on him for he cares for you. Hallelujah. You know, that's a very simplistic statement right there. It's it's simple in saying, but it's a little bit harder to do in reality. To to cast every worry, every doubt, every care over on him. Because you see, all of that chokes out the word. And it's the word that's going to give you an ever increasing rate of glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and so as we cast those cares over on him, then we say, hey, you know, here I am. You know, I'm clothing myself with you. I'm clothing myself. You know, Jesus humbled himself even to the point of death. Hallelujah. And we're to follow Jesus. And we're to follow Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. I, I, I love this passage right here. And I know that Brother Fred and I, more and more we are finding out about the grace of god and we want to walk in more of his glory and i believe that that this this message was put in our heart even before we went to mexico yeah. and then as we went to mexico and we saw his grace operating there and we saw the glory of God come into that room. We saw people delivered and healed and saved. And we saw them, you know, receive everything that God had for them. It was a, they were humbling themselves. They were, they were giving up. Have you given up your sickness? Have you given up your infirmity? Have you given it up? Because see, 
humility and healing are connected. They're connected. Prideful or being proud and sickness are connected. And so we want to destroy that, that proud mindset and, and, and get rid of the sickness, get rid of the infirmity, get rid of the doubt, get rid of the cares of this world. And so that we can be ever increasing Amen. in his glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now that's where we're headed. If y'all want to go with us, come on. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. You know, Brother Fred had a dream. He was going up a mountaintop. And then there were certain levels that were plateaus. And they were nice and green and smooth and fruitful. And some of the people that were that were going up, they decided that they would just stay on that plateau. And we've had people tell us, "Oh, I don't, I don't need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I don't need, uh, you know, this and that. I don't need to know more about the Word." And and so they stayed at that plateau. But then there were others that went on that went on and so we're we're headed upward yeah. we're headed upward to be in that ever increasing glory that jesus died to restore back to us yes hallelujah that's good sure. and so i give the lord praise for restoration hallelujah. and some of you are needing restoration in your backs some of you are needing restoration in your in your uh your internal organs uh, some of you are needing restoration in your finances. Some of you are needing restoration in in just uh, your family situation. And so uh, I speak restore, restore, restore. Let that restoration come to you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I want to be humble before the Lord and not prideful. I want to be humble so that he can, can give me that grace that I need to be able to operate and, and to be able to, to know more about him, to be able to learn. Hallelujah.